Today's episode is brought to you by Function of Beauty. You know, I've realized lately that uh, I really am not in control of my life and I don't (laughs) often get a say of what happens, but you know what? I do get a say if I want to choose exactly what I want my shampoo and conditioner and body wash and all the things to Uh look like from Function of Beauty. So if you would like to exercise your control, (laughs) this ad is for you. (laughs) You guys already know this, but Function of Beauty is the world leader in fully customized hair care. They create your unique formula based on a short but very thorough quiz to give your hair everything it needs to look and feel its absolute best. Every product is sulfate-free and paraben-free, vegan, and cruelty-free, and there are over 60,000 real five-star customer reviews. If you guys would like to get in on this, go to functionofbeauty.com slash advice to take your quiz and save 20% on your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. That's functionofbeauty.com slash advice to let them know you heard about it here and to get 20% off your order. Functionofbeauty.com slash advice. Today's episode is brought to you by Athena Club. Athena Club's razors has thousands of five-star reviews and is designed with built-in skin guards and an innovative handle to help prevent razor burn while being gentle on curves. Plus, the razor blade is surrounded by water-activated serum with shea butter and hyaluronic acid, which is a holy grail for skincare. And honestly, my favorite, since the first time we worked with them and they sent it to us, I still use the Athena Club razor, and I am so excited to be partnering with them again. Athena Club also has the dreamiest shea foams that's back in stock together the athena club razor and shave foam will leave your skin soft hydrated and super smooth show your skin you care with the athena club razor kit sign up today and you'll get 20 percent off your first order just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code advice that's a-t-h-e-n-a-c-l-u-b.com with promo code advice for 20 percent off today's episode is brought to you by duke cannon Guys, say hello to Thick, a new product from Duke Cannon Supply Company. So I've been like really into shower products. And also I've kind of discovered that there's some products that I love using like men's products. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Ash? Mm -hmm. We've related on that. The scents. The scents, the quality, everything. And today we are partnering with a company that if you're like us, you will be excited about. And that is Duke Cannon. Thick earns its name by being three times thicker than any of the other common body washes. Duke Cannon Thick High Viscosity Body Wash is $9 each, or you can get all four for $30. And they have a ton of great scents like Bourbon Oak Barrel, Naval Diplomacy, Old Glory, and more. Visit DukeCannon.com and use the promo code ADVICE for 10% off your entire order. Free shipping with orders over $20. A range of Duke Cannon men's premium products are also available at select Target stores. Hey, Ash. Yes. I'm going to start the episode with a dad joke. What? <laughs> that means you get two. <laughs> I don't or know why. Or you end it with a fun fact. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I <laughs> I don't know why trees make me so nervous. I guess because they're so shady. I've heard that one before. It's don't not my favorite. It's my not my it's not my favorite. It is not my favorite. <laughs> We're in a fight. <laughs> Mark, you know what to do. Hello everyone, welcome back to Unsolicited Advice. My name is Ashley. I'm Taryn. And um, you know the drill. We're we're here to uh, heal. We're here to advise. And um, yeah, we're um, very excited because next week is our Enneagram episode. uh, (laughs) They're like, we've heard this before. They're like, it lies. (laughs) we've heard this before um we're very excited about because it's been you guys know it's been a long time coming um if you're new taryn and i firmly believe in and support and love the enneagram Mm -hmm. it is a personality test we have it on our instagram if you would like to um take your own test and figure out more about yourself it is one of the most accurate personality tests that we have or that I have ever taken. Yes. Um, I've learned so much about myself and we are going to dive in because a lot of you guys have sent us Enneagram stories. Um, so if you haven't yet, this is your time. The universe is telling you right now yeah. to stop what you're doing and send us a story. Um, or if you have, you know, any kind of like personality related questions yes. or experiences, please let us know. Yes. A lot of relationships. Uh-huh. Uh, I could tell you a lot 
based off of your guys' stories of the people yep. involved. Um, so yeah, send us any Enneagram stories that you guys have. Um, email them to us at what's our email, Taryn? Advice unsolicited pod at, at gmail.com. Gmail. <laughs> Do you remember when <laughs> we like first pod. started the podcast? And I would like, it was like <laughs> every episode we would like try to like see if the other one knew it. each other. Off. It was like a test. I don't know. You know why I think it's hard is because it's the same thing, but different is the same. No. Like Instagram is unsolicited advice pod. Follow us there. But then the email, we couldn't get that. Uh And then our Twitter, we couldn't get the same. So it's like, I'm always constantly like, uh, wait, which one? (laughs) Help. Which order does it go in? Um, Fully. Yeah. So get excited for that because- yeah. She's coming. How are you doing, Terry? She's coming. I'm good. So we actually are doing our YouTube lis- are you listeners, watchers, viewers. whatever it would be, viewers. Subscribers. Um, they probably are like, wait a second. You look the same as last week because we're doing a twofer. We're doing which a twofer. We haven't done in a really long time, like two back to back in the same day. Yeah. So I, I planned accordingly and I'm on my second coffee. Yeah. We're caffeinated. We are, you know, we're comfortable. We're definitely like more like caffeinated and feeling feeling weird feeling weird but guys mark's going on vacation Uh uh-huh should we all just take a moment we all need to just send positive vibes mark Mark. snaps for mark get your rest on mark and um yeah it's funny how many people still are like we miss mark we Mm -hmm. do too honestly guys yes it's been we haven't seen him in over a year yeah we still like text and email with him all the time but like we miss him being he brought a lot our cheerleader to the show you know yeah so we were constantly just trying to impress him and see if he was laughing <laughs> i was just constantly trying to not mess up for mark for mark yeah because yeah, mark's the best yeah. so anyways we love mark thank you mark for all that you wish do. him the best vacation have a good vacation and yeah so that's why if we seem a little um like loopy at any point it's because this is our second episode yeah and we're um, killing it i just went on like a daycation yeah, you did. And it was fantastic. Yeah, you did. I went to Palm Springs for literally 24 hours. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and it was great. It was so much fun. Um, so you got to do those things for yourself. No, seriously. For your mental health, for your spiritual health. Seriously. Physically, emotionally, all those it's things. It's so true. Um, how are you? Anything new besides your daycation? Uh, well, you know what I did on my daycation? I learned how to longboard for nice. the first time. And I really want to preface this. It doesn't. I'm not good. <laughs> you know, but I didn't fall. That's a big deal. I was going forward. I wasn't wobbling around. I was steering pretty decently. She was going slow, but like we were, yeah, we were doing steady. it. I had a, I had a drink in my hand. Didn't spill it. Yeah. It was great. But that's kind of the point. Like longboarding is more just chill. like chill, yeah. which we all know right up my alley. Yeah. Sounds right great. up your alley. So, so much fun. It was a good time. Um, I've always wanted to learn how to do that and yeah. kind of master it. I feel like it fits my personality. I feel like I could totally see that. Yeah, it was great. I'm yeah. uh, I'm gonna buy a board today. So stop. Are you really? A hundred percent. Yes. Oh my god, amazing. I'm sold on it. it was That's great. amazing. Yeah, I don't know I if used I would. To. Oh well, there's some neighborhoods around here that I feel like I would do it at. The see, problem is like the roads aren't that smooth. You and also like the prime longboarding situation is just like a really long straight road yeah. like that you can just like vibe down you know yeah so palm springs was perfect palm springs is perfect palm or springs is like a grid i used to go longboarding at the beach all the time like down the long like yeah. you know i've tried there before the only thing is the sand kind of like scared, sand. scared me like you know on like the not the boardwalk but like oh like if there's sand yeah on the like cement sometimes yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. lot of sand and i, I would get no, nervous for sure. around that for sure but you know when I master it, yeah, we'll say no problem. She'll be like, "What? Sam? No big deal." What do you think? Unbothered, I am? Completely amateur? unbothered. <laughs> Just flies right past everyone. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I love that for you. Um, uh, you have a tear it up. For uh, us. Sure, sure do, sure do, sure do, sure do. Amazing. I'm not gonna tell you the title, oh, but okay. here is look. today's tear it up. Uh, if you guys don't know the tear it up segment, 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 I'm. <laughs> tired okay (laughs) if you guys don't already know the tearing it up segment is the kind of like funny segment where you guys send in funny stories or funny situations um a lot this last year have revolved around school online yeah and this also revolves around Uh school online um so yeah we're just gonna dive right into it she uh she writes please keep me anonymous (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my gosh. It has to um, be bad. She goes, hi, <laughs> Ashley and Taryn. She gives us her name, which I'm not going to read. Um, I have a turn it up for you guys, but I wanted to start by saying that you guys act like me and my best friend, but you feel like older sisters to me. You have gotten me through a whole bunch of stuff. So thank you. Although that doesn't really cover exactly how thankful I am. I want to start by saying that I am addicted to school, which is so weird. I care so much about my grades and how my classmates see me. Anyway, I live in Ontario, Canada, and we just went back into lockdown because of COVID. Um, So back to online school for me. Yesterday, I really had to pee during class. So I turned my camera and microphone off and brought my computer into the bathroom so that I could still follow along with the lesson. I was sitting on the toilet, but I (laughs) I was sitting on the toilet, (laughs) but naked, obviously. Why? When? when, Because she was going to the bathroom. Her top too? Uh, I was picturing bottom. Unless she was in a romper. Uh, all oh, bets are off oh, with the romper. a romper. <laughs> Dude, in public toilets where you're just when sitting there's there, like, like a huge gap in the door, and you're just like <laughs> so topless, exposed. and you're just like, cool. this is great. Uh, yeah, I don't miss that. I haven't worn a romper in a while. I know, same. When my teacher asked me a question, so I leaned down to answer, but I accidentally turned my camera on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, was the computer like on the floor? I'm, I'm assuming so. That angle must have been. Well, at worst. least. I mean, your your innards are like in Covered. the toilet bowl. Yeah. But still, I mean, that's innards. <laughs> you know oh, what I meant innards. though? Like, <laughs> you know what innards. I mean? Everything should be Ooh. in the porcelain right. circle. Right. But that's never an angle that you would it's want. Not, it's not, Just it's not like great. Knees. It's not a great angle. Yeah. <laughs> and she's probably like bent over. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Um, <laughs> I love this like next thing. Oh no. She writes after that, I panicked and left. <laughs> <laughs> just exits out of the class and doesn't I would come back. Snap that computer shut. I so would fast. literally slam it shut, cry a little bit and then yep. email my teacher and be like, I'm never coming back. I would be like, I'm submitting my transfer. I was like, I'll do all my work, but I'm never showing my face. I will be in your online again forever. I'm gone. My name is now gone for good. Danielle. <laughs> she puts, I wish I could finish this on a good note, but no, I did pass the class and I cut my ties to all the people in that class <laughs> <laughs> because I had no good friends in that class. Anyways, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Love you guys. So um, brutal. I, I am deeply, something in me is like so sorry for all of the kids that had to do online school this last year Yes, because I have heard nothing but stories like this or store, like there's been, I've seen videos and memes where like the kid is in class and like someone walks by and is like changing or naked Dude, did and you see the that? mom yeah, yeah the mom yeah. who's like in the back and the teacher's like oh like yeah. <laughs> who is that or whatever oh my gosh and that had me dying oh uh, but like I'm sure that happened to so many people yeah and I couldn't I mean I would do the same thing I'd be like I don't want to miss you know what's the lecture but I have to pee so I would, I, I yeah. would, without thinking, I would have done that too. I wouldn't now because I've heard so many stories, but like I would initially have done yeah. the same thing. It's just, oh, it's a rough life right now. High school is bad enough. I know. Let without. alone your entire <laughs> class having, seeing you naked. Oh yeah. dear Lord. Uh, rough. You know, I've realized lately that uh, I really am not in control of my life and I don't <laughs> often get a say of what happens, but you know what? I do get a say if I want to choose exactly what I want my shampoo and conditioner and body wash and all the things to look Uh like from Function of Beauty. So if you would like to exercise your control, (laughs) this ad is for you. (laughs) Guys, uh, Function of Beauty is the world leader in fully customized hair care. You guys already know there's a short but thorough quiz that you can take to give your hair everything it needs to look and feel its absolute best and function of beauty fans are absolutely wild about the fragrances and for a good reason your hair has never smelled so amazing you can try tropical mango sweet peach crisp pear or subtle scents such as lavender rose and eucalyptus if fragrance is not for you that's okay you can do unscented as well me and taryn love our function of beauty um i went with a nice little melon scent in a green color what did you do taryn I went with like a tropical mango and I chose like kind of like a corally color because, you know, it just goes with my aesthetic again. 
<laughs> in control, girl. And the reason Taryn and I love Function of Beauty is because they put your name on the bottle so Taryn can't steal mine. And you can't steal mine, girl. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash advice to take your quiz and save 20% off your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. That's functionofbeauty.com slash advice to let them know you heard about it here and to get 20% off your order. Functionofbeauty.com slash advice. So now that it is officially summer and no longer winter, you know, we're going to have to start showing our legs again, which means, guys, I have to start shaving again. (laughs) The world's forcing you. And honestly, my favorite, since the first time we worked with them and they sent it to us, I still use the Athena Club razor and I am so excited to be partnering with them again. UA fam, you already know, but the Athena Club razor has thousands of five-star reviews and is designed with built-in skin guards and an innovative handle to help prevent razor burn while being gentle on curves. The best part is the razor kit is only $9 and comes with your choice of handle color. Mine's blue. It's like a cute little powder blue and an extra blade head and the best part it comes with a magnetic hook for easy shower storage which is my favorite part you don't have to like awkwardly hold it or set it down each time um it doesn't get rusty sitting on the ground or i don't know why it would be on the ground but it doesn't get rusty because it has its magnetic holder show your skin you care with the athena club razor kit Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code ADVICE. That's A-T-H-E-N-A-C-L-U-B.com with promo code ADVICE for 20% off. All right. So we are going to move on to our story section. And I'm going to go first. I have another kind of short one this week. Get out of here. I know. Okay, so this story is called, or titled, Over Fantasizing People and Life. Ooh. Ash, me and you are both going to relate to this one so much. This is one of our many points of friendship that yeah. we've we've yeah. vibed on. Yeah. Um, okay. Hi. Hope you two wonderful ladies are having an amazing morning, day, or night. Well, you know what? Wait, can I say it? Kath. Her name's Kath. Kath. We are having an amazing morning. It's currently 11.55 a.m. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that morning still? Technically. I mean, for me. <laughs> this is like prime morning. Anyways. Okay. Uh, my name is Kath. You can use my name. I am an Enneagram 9. My people. I know. We've had a lot of nines writing in, which like honestly proud of you all. Because We're the coolest. I know that's a big deal for you. Okay. I have been online this past school year due to COVID and this has made me extremely bored. Mm. Nothing interesting has happened in my life for quite some time. It has been a while since I've talked to a guy and had masculine energy around me. Honestly. Honestly. that on so many levels. Same. So what is a girl to do besides think about the guys <laughs> that I have talked to? Right, right. Naturally. Girl, I've gotten, I've dated, I've gotten married, I've had children. All in my head. (laughs) Multiple times. Multiple scenarios. With multiple prospects. I've traveled the world. I've been famous. (laughs) I've died. I've died. (laughs) I've died. (laughs) Okay. I, um, I used to do this every now and then, but it has gotten unhealthy. I will spend hours dreaming up a person who I may or may not already know and think about me running into them and starting a conversation with Mm -hmm. them. Um, My imagination runs free with this and it can go from, hey, we haven't talked in a few years to, oh yeah, we're dating now, (laughs) all in my little head. It also goes for life in general. I think about the people I will be able to meet and become friends with next year when I'm in person for school. And I fantasize about actually laughing and making jokes during class, not being scared to ask the teacher a question and playing in the orchestra at my school. However, I know this is getting bad because I have been taking advantage of online school. I wake up 10 minutes before class starts, get Mm -hmm. to use notes on my test Mm -hmm. and have so much freedom. I know I will be miserable in person because of waking up early and having harder classes, but it still won't stop me from fantasizing my future. Mm. I don't think this is a particularly bad thing. I just think I have taken it a bit too far, especially with people. I have talked myself into liking people I haven't talked to in years. 
Any help would be very much appreciated. Love you, Kath. Kath. Girl. I I really just want to start this whole thing off by saying you're so normal. Yeah. Especially if you're, you're, especially (laughs) between like the three of us. (laughs) Welcome to the club, my friend. Just, uh, any problem we have, if anyone writes in, we're like, you're fine. Oh, honey. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> no, literally me and Ash. Oof. I don't even, it was pretty early on in our friendship. She mentioned she has a problem with daydreaming. And I was like, okay, but like same. And we kind of tipped out. You know how like, you don't want to fully admit, there's nothing worse than like, if she were to be like, oh, I have a problem with, daydreaming and I was like yeah me too like I marry people I talk about what and she was like oh I just meant like I like doze off for a minute (laughs) you know like you admit too much yeah but I relate to this so much and I definitely think it can get to a very unhealthy place Mm -hmm. and for me personally I will I will think up scenarios on my way to places so say for instance I'm like going to church and I'll be like oh I'm gonna walk in and then I'm gonna see this guy from across the room and then he's (laughs) gonna be like worshiping and I'm gonna be like oh my god love a man of God and then I'm gonna (laughs) like he's gonna walk up to me and we're just gonna bump into each other and then we're gonna talk and blah 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 (laughs) and what ends up happening is I become so invested in this perfect scenario that I've thought of it's almost like movie syndrome right like you you make your life into this Hollywood like, cheesy fantasy movie. And then I get there and nothing even remotely close happens to the point where then I'm, I'm slightly sad the mm-hmm. whole time. And then when I leave, I'm very like unimpressed with like what life really is. Yeah. And it becomes very unhealthy because I think I still struggle with this. Like I have this idea of what I want my future to be and things will come into my life that are good and have the potential to be really good. But I get so wrapped up in like, well, is this really going to turn out the way I want that? I, I think I miss out on a lot. Oh, a hundred percent. Because what you've created in your head is it's like perfect in every way. Yes. And life just simply is not, it is not. and it's never going to be like that. So I have, I've had similar situations as Taryn. I also, I think on like a different note, but very similar. I, I tend to, if I'm excited about something or I'm about to experience something, I tend to have very high expectations because I'll, for lack of a better word, fantasize about it and, and imagine what it'll be like. Yeah. And then again, because it's in my head and it's perfect in my head, it inevitably will never be like that. Yeah. And that has led to me being disappointed in people, in um, friendships, in yeah. experiences, fun trips, like yeah. trips where I dropped money, you know, to go. Like yes. I've had expectations of it and walked away being like, well, that was fun, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to yeah. be. I mean, it's even affected dates where I thought I was so excited for yes. a date that I set the bar way too high. I'm like, Ashley, this is still just a date yeah a first date with with another human that is also broken you know so you have to I've learned in my you know 30 years of wisdom yes that (laughs) I have to I have to knock it off Mm -hmm. for my own good because otherwise no one will ever measure up and no thing will ever measure up and I'll never be happy because these these thoughts that I have in my head about x y and z are are never going to to come true and I'm really holding myself back and same thing as Taryn like walking in expecting all of this stuff to happen her almost expecting it would be almost blinding you from something else that could be happening a thousand because now you're going to walk into church looking for this guy but what if there's like this woman who you're supposed to connect with yeah you know who has some like life she's supposed to share like some like or like or maybe I should she help. has, yeah. maybe mm-hmm. she has some kind of like weird connection with you that you guys could like become friends or what if I was across the room and you didn't know, you know, cause you were looking for this guy, you know, you no. never know, but you can't, you can't, you're better than a guy. Yeah. Ash. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put these blinders on looking for one thing when there's so many other things that could happen. It's, it's a recipe for being like having an unsatisfying life yes. and, and keeping you from living. Yes, girl. And I think too, like I notice when I get too wrapped up in like needing to like watch shows constantly that 
what like I'm chasing a certain feeling, mm -hmm. you know, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, well that's not healthy either. But what I will say, I think when it comes to thoughts, it's a very tricky area because there is an extent that is out of your control. Right. And I think that you have to be careful because if you're constantly getting mad at yourself for thinking things, that is a way to just be mean to yourself. And when in reality, like we can't necessarily control when a thought pops in our head, right? but you can control resetting and trying to like get back to reality and whatever. We've talked about this, like actively yes. fighting it off or taking yes. control of the thought. And instead of it being, because sometimes I think like basically like, negative attention is still attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so you, you find that even with kids, right? Like if a kid is constantly seeking their parents' attention because they feel neglected in some way, say that parent starts being like giving them negative, unhealthy attention, mm -hmm. they still will start to crave that because it still is a form of attention. Yeah, And I think that our minds work the same way. Sometimes when we're so hard on ourselves and we make it a big deal, like if I were to be like, start daydreaming about something, I catch myself and I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, mm -hmm. why are you doing this? Like, you're so dumb, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm creating like a pathway in my brain to that tying. Every time I do this, it's this negative thing. And then I have self-hate and all this stuff that comes with it. And the more I do that pattern, the easier it is for my mind to constantly go there every time I catch myself. Right. Yeah. So I think it's important that you... Like for me, what I started doing, this is so stupid, but I remember like when I was really stuck in a thought pattern with my ex, um, I always had these like really, really intense, insecure thoughts. And so I started doing this thing where like when I would catch myself thinking of it or like forming the scenario where he's doing all these horrible things to me and I just don't know about it. Yeah. I would literally like, I would literally stop and I would be like, you got this. Like mm -hmm. you got this. You're fine. And sometimes I would literally just like shake my head, like almost like, okay, like shake it off. You're yeah. fine. Yeah. And I would move on and I would be intentional about putting a positive thought in my mind from there. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't this negative thing. And for you, it can be something where if you feel yourself daydreaming, be like, oh, okay, I just caught myself. I'm going to, I'm going to say five things that are present in my current life. So right now, if I was daydreaming, I caught myself. I would be like, oh, okay. I'm sitting here with Charlie. I'm so thankful for Charlie. Like, I love mm -hmm. him. I would look over and be like, Ash is here. So thankful for that friendship. Like, oh my gosh, we're recording. The lights are kind of bright in my eyes, like whatever. And I'm, what I'm doing is grounding myself into present moment. the present moment. And then I move on, but it doesn't have to be something where I like have to smack my hand every time I do it because I can't control the thought that came in, but I can control the narrative I switch. Yeah. You know? Yeah. On a, on a, <laughs> on a less resourceful and healthy note. Yeah. One of the best spots to daydream is on a plane. <laughs> Girl, that's a great place am to I right escape from. Yeah. Right? Cause there's nothing uh -huh. to do. You have nothing but time to waste. And there's so many people and I love people watching. So I'll just, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll just sit there and just like, I, I could entertain myself oh, for yeah. hours. If I was to be like lost on an Island, I think mentally I would be okay for a while. <laughs> Because I would just like freaking, That's so it'd true. be like movie yeah. after movie in my <laughs> yep. head. They'd be like, oh, you poor thing. And you'd be like, hold on, let me get my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I come back with a volleyball. <laughs> yeah. Well yeah. yeah. Oh, shoot. No, it's so true. And I think it is so normal and everyone does it, but... That's like with everything in life is finding the balance of like, okay, mm -hmm. you already recognize it's a little unhealthy. Right. We've all been there. Right. Right. <laughs> Literally yesterday for me. Um, and then now like, what do you do from there and how do you be intentional about yeah. trying to change a pattern? hundred percent. Yeah, girl. Yep. You're fine. You got this. You're going to be fine. You're still young. You're still fine. in school. <laughs> like I remember being, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if it ever changed or if it got worse. Not to be like, it's going to get worse, but I'm just saying, like, I think you have a valuable head start of realizing that at a young age and trying to like yeah. modify. Yeah. And also you're adaptable. Like when school starts, you'll figure it out. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got this girl. Yes. We're, we are here. <laughs> 
We support we'll, you. We'll meet you. We'll meet you in the daydream. Should world. we start a club? Yeah. Should we get t-shirts? Daydreamers Anonymous. Yes. <laughs> so I feel like I get deja vu every time we do this specific ad because I feel like anyone who's listened to even one of our episodes mm -hmm. knows how much we support and mm -hmm. just cheer on people who go yes. and get help, mm -hmm. specifically in counseling. <laughs> so we get so pumped when we get to partner with people who have that same vision like BetterHelp. Guys, you already know we're big fans of BetterHelp. BetterHelp has licensed professional counselors who are specialized in things like depression, anger, stress, family conflicts, anxiety, LGBT matters, relationships, grief, sleeping, self-esteem, and trauma, and so much more. One of our favorite things about BetterHelp is that they have counselors available to you on multiple platforms so you can talk to them on the phone you can text them you could well I almost said DM but that's not a thing what is it? <laughs> um, you can talk to them in whatever way makes you feel most comfortable another thing I love is that you are able to switch counselors at any time for no extra charge Taryn and I fully believe that sometimes it takes some time and sometimes it takes a few counselors to find the right fit for you and better help makes that easy we want you guys to start living a happier life today. And as one of our listeners, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash advice. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash advice. So I've been like really into shower products. And also I've kind of discovered that there's some products that I love using like men's products. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Ash? Mm -hmm. We've related on that. The scents. The scents, the quality, everything. And today we are partnering with a company that if you're like us, you will be excited about. And that is Duke Cannon. You guys have probably heard already, but Thick is a new product from Duke Cannon Supply Company. Thick earns its name by being three times thicker than all the other common body washes, which we love. Duke Cannon Thick High Viscosity Body Wash is $9 each, or you can get all four for $30. They have the most amazing scents, guys. I'm a big scent person. It affects me dramatically. And um, they have a lot of very, like, earthy smells, which we love a lot. My absolute favorite, if I was to recommend one, would be the Naval Diplomacy. It has a refreshing ocean scent with notes of fresh water, musk, and bergamot. That's like your dream I love combo. bergamot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Visit DukeCannon.com and use promo code ADVICE for 10% off your entire order. Free shipping with orders over $20. A range of Duke Cannon's men's premium products are also available at select Target stores. So most of us are into hygiene and just making sure that we are taking care of our body and self-care, all that good stuff. And there are so many companies out there that have cool products and different things that help you to do that. And today we are partnering with Manscaped. If you guys are looking for the perfect gift for him that he will actually use, Manscaped is my go-to. Goodbye, Harry. Hello, clean. Manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredible, comfortable grooming experience. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. And the best part, the optimized lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is also waterproof so your man can groom in the shower and not have to worry about making a mess on the bathroom floor. Can we get an amen, ladies? Get 20% off and free shipping with code ADVICE20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code ADVICE20. Experience premium grooming with Manscaped. Um, okay, my turn. Um, this one is titled, why can't I like a nice guy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Same. You and me both, girl. It's funny because that's all we want. But then you look at your past and you're like, wait, what? It is. Yeah. We'll dive in. We're about to dive in. <laughs> We're like, I don't even read her email. We just Let's just like, talk about it. Yeah. I don't need to know. <laughs> the title was enough for me. <laughs> okay. She goes, hi, ladies. Hello. Um, my name is blank, but you can keep me anonymous. If you read this on the pod, um, whoops, you know, I said that I, I really emphasize like that in the weirdest way, <laughs> but we're what? just gonna, we're just gonna, she meant my name is blank, but please keep me anonymous. If you read this on the pod, I like paused anyways, no one cares. <laughs> okay. No one cares. <laughs> of course you two can know my name though. 
I love your podcast and have been invested since you first launched your promo <gasps> before the first episode. <gasps> wow. Uh, do you love remember that. that promo? What was our, was it the, it was like, I, I, I posted, a, I uploaded a video and then we did our, our car, car karaoke. Oh yeah. Which was Paramore. Yeah. Which you, we need to do that again. Okay. Or no, it wasn't Paramore. It was 1975. Yeah. The, was the first one. Paramore was the oh, second one. Oh, that's right. That's right. Anyways. We need to, we used to dive, we, we used to dive in. We should post all our like COVID stuff. COVID changed us. <laughs> oh. We, we still, honestly, guys, like, are we I in think, a rut? <laughs> no. I think, I think a little bit. Like the other day I was like talking to Ash and I was like, dude, when's the last time we hung out? I know. She, like, <laughs> I cannot tell you the last time me and you have intentionally done something together. It's true. And we've discussed this. And I think because not only has has Taryn moved in since yeah. this podcast yeah. launched, yeah. but, um, you know, COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think we went from, you know, having intentional time together to seeing each other daily. Yeah. And that that's one of those things where we're an old married couple. We are like, I hang out with <laughs> all my other friends. Like we do fun stuff all the time. They're constantly like texting me and being like, what are you doing? Or like calling yeah. and FaceTiming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are always like going out to eat or like doing stuff with other people. And it's so funny. Cause like, yeah, we need to we need to step up the the, yeah, the why friend are we game. Talking about this? I don't know you you kind of took us down this way, I did? but I fully went with it. So back to anonymous. <laughs> I'm, I'm having like a memory lapse. I'm like, what are we talking about? Um, oh, she asked about the first. She said she's been listening. Oh, we're since talking the first about episode because we were doing like fun. Okay, I, I got it. Yeah. Anyways, guys, we're gonna respark our romance. <laughs> Plan a, yeah. plan a trip <laughs> yeah. sometime soon. She yeah. continues. I have heard you give a lot of advice, but not sure if I've heard this situation before. Stop it. But I think it's something a lot of people can relate to. Okay. Love this. I'm writing this at almost 1 a.m. after getting home from a date that I was so excited for. First of all, love that you got home and immediately hopped on the laptop and ready Same. to type this out. Wait, is this, does this relate to our story? I we think it kind of does. Bit? I don't know. We'll see. I love when that happens. The backstory is that I am 24 and I've been talking to the guy who is also 24 for about a week. And he asked me to go kayaking with him this weekend, but I wanted to meet him for a drink or coffee before. Solid mm -hmm. move. Solid move. Also, congratulations. Cause a week in <laughs> dating app world or just mm -hmm. talking to a guy is mm -hmm. like, three years yeah, it takes like if you make it past like four exchanges yeah you're in <laughs> <laughs> the algorithm i know <laughs> um we settled on a drink and he was so nice he opened the doors for me paid for me everything we were very in sync about what we thought about life and what we wanted to do moving forward However, after drinks, we decided to go back to my place. As we watched a movie, I felt less and less attracted to him. Ugh, he was sucks. holding my hand, kissing me, very, very sweet, and yet I was a little turned off. I have been in a few serious relationships in my life, and they've all been with pretty bad guys. She adds mental and verbal abuse, cheating, etc. But this guy is not like that. My question is, have you guys ever felt this? What do I do? Why can't I like a guy that acts like an adult and is nice and sweet to me? We are planning to hang out again and I want to because I do like him, but how do I get past this weird he's too nice thing? Help. Thanks for everything. Love Anonymous. This is good. This is good. I this feel like is this good. is really good. This yes. is really juicy. This is li literally, we've had conversations, Multiple conversations about, about this about recently this. too. Um, there is so many, so many things I want to hit on. I want to hit on the fact that I really do think like mainstream TV, social media has, has created this like fantasy yeah. over bad boys. Yep. Right. Um, that makes you want them. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think we as human beings, not just women tend to kind of like once we've encountered an experience or a relationship with a a person that kind of feels comfortable and it, yeah. so it's easy to kind of like fall back into it oh yeah I do think that sometimes the nice guys a lot of the times actually tend to get overlooked yes because they are nice yes and I do however think that the nice guys if not told to but if if you suggested that you wanted to have more fun and like a, not not like no, I know what you're saying. You know saying. what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. It's like, okay. In like 
Shit's crazy. He's also being respectful. Yes. And there's this episode where she's like, you're too nice. She's telling Ted he's too nice. And then she's like, talk crap about someone just like anyone. Yeah. And like, she like loved that because she's like wanting to see that side of him. Because I think there's multiple levels. One, when you're with someone who's kind of a hot mess, you don't feel the pressure to have to be perfect. Yeah. it, It does something to your ego where you're like, Oh, I'm good. Yes. I'm the good. I'm the, I'm the strong, the healthy one in this relationship. It's so much easier. And I've talked about, okay. When a guy is like sucky Uh and does something bad to you, it's easier to accept because you're like, well, you never tried to pretend to be something else. Right. When a good guy does something that hurts your feelings, it feels so much bigger Yes, because you expect so much more. The bar set high. Yes. When they're douchebags, the bar set so low. Yeah. You're like, oh, you cheated on me. Well, and it's so funny. It's so funny. Like the douchebags, when they randomly decide to open the door, you're like, oh, yeah, and you want to change How sweet. them, and yeah, you know, girl, and they won't, they won't change for you. You know why? It's because we and have this natural, like, motherly. We want to take care of someone instinct. Most women do, so we see say, it as like a I challenge. Don't know if I have that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you can have without tying it to motherhood. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's just like I think we are able to care for people yeah. in a way that like we want to help, we want to fix, whatever. Yeah. I think me and my sister and Taryn have had conversations about this. Um, <laughs> but it's funny, the douchebags, when they do the bare minimum, how much we celebrate it and yeah. lean into it. Like if I went out with a douchebag last night and he did something that was the bare minimum, like opened the door for me or, you know, yeah. did something gentlemanly like it would be the first thing I tell my friends so that they kind of like him like I want I I want him I want them to like him you know but if he's a nice guy and he's doing all of the nice guy things all the bare minimum stuff then it's like only up from there and I think I'm just gonna go off of like my own personality I think that's scary because that's kind of in the marriage material category which feels serious which can be scary yeah I think too like I don't know it depends on what you've known up to this point. Yeah. Like, I think our first experiences with guys shapes a lot. It does. I don't know if you can really, like my first guy that I genuinely like innocent love, right? You Mm -hmm. have like your innocent love. Then you have your like, oh, I know what love is and I love. But my first like innocent love was this guy who was constantly bouncing between girl to me to girl to me like whatever and I I got put in this really crappy position and so I formed this I have to be enough so that he chooses me yeah and then even in like my past relationship there was a lot of like he would put on expectation of like I want you to be this and I would have to work really hard yeah to get recognition And so for me, when I'm in a situation with a guy who I know genuinely like loves and appreciates everything about me, I, that scares me because I'm like, but what do, like, what do I need to work towards? And like, what if all of a sudden you realize like I'm not it. And then, so it's easier for me to like have this competitive nature and like work hard to get a guy to like me Mm -hmm. than just to sit back and be like, wow, he just likes me for who I am, Yeah, which is so messed up. But it's the whole, what we talked about in the last story, like negative attention is attention. Yeah, And when you start to form where like, I got a high out of like what you said, like the little things that would be appreciated that I work so hard for that that's the feeling I tend to naturally want from a guy. Like I want to work hard to get attention. Yeah. When in reality, is that really what I want? Like, no, but that's what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. And it's easy to fall back into. Yes. I, uh, I, I dated this guy a few times, um, maybe like three years ago. Um, and I had this actual conversation with Taryn right here, (laughs) um, about how I wasn't that like I liked him, but I wasn't that attracted to him. Yeah. And I had multiple conversations with multiple people that were like, oh, sometimes like the attraction grows. Yeah. And where I ended up going with this is I ended up going out with him, I think a total of three times Mm -hmm. because I was like, he checks all of the like core boxes that I need. Yeah. In a, in a partner. And, um, was hilarious. Like we got along, like we, we, everything was so easy but that little like spark wasn't there. Now I'm going to say, because I'm a healthy 30 year old 
Yes, she is. Full of wisdom. Obviously, the spark isn't everything. Yeah. And that should not make or break a relationship. I do think with those nice guys, if you're not feeling that spark, you need to give them a a, a fair shot because you never know. There's been multiple times where I've been like, oh, I I don't know how I feel. And then I've gone out with them and I've been like, Oh my damn. Yeah. <laughs> All this, they're like a different person, you yeah. know? And you know, a first date is nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. I'm a hot mess on a first date. Usually I'm, I'm like stuttering. I'm like, I, I'm trying to tell a story, but I can't remember a damn thing Yeah, in my brain. Cause my brain goes blank whenever I'm nervous. And so like, I would hate for that to be held against me. Yeah. So I would give my rule of thumb is like, it give them a couple, maybe mm-hmm. three dates max. You don't want to like get them invested and then yeah. say no. But I think a solid three dates. Yeah. You can usually tell if that attraction is there or not within that yeah. amount of time. And that gives them time to get comfortable with oh, you. Fully. I think too stripping down, like for me, the place I've come to recently is even though I think like the chase of a guy is super exciting and it's fun and it's like all this stuff. But I'm like, if I really strip down, like what do I want in life? Mm-hmm. I don't want a guy that I feel like I have to chase constantly. Like I want someone who voluntarily is giving me their time and affection. And even though like the thought of like going out and just like walking up to a guy in a bar is like so exciting. I'm like, but that's not what I want. Like I want some, I want marriage. I want a family. Like I want to start having kids. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that is the one thing with age that sucks. Like as a woman, like you have to start thinking about that stuff yeah. when you get older, which is so annoying. Like I should be on my own freaking time clock, I told but you. I'm on my freaking ovaries apparently. <laughs> Remember I told you I, my gray hair. Yeah. She got a gray hair and was like my eggs. <laughs> Every time I watch that new I girl like, episode. I need to a guy right yeah. now. I need to like freeze my eggs right now. I, I literally panicking. told my mom the other day, we had a serious conversation. I was like, mom, if I go to the doctors and they tell me you have a year, like a month, a year, whatever to have your own children. I was like, I'm looking through a catalog and uh, I'm just yeah. going to like pick one. Absolutely. <laughs> Cause I want to feel what it's like to have babies and who knows like that might not be like in my cards, but it's something that I really feel like I want to do, but it's staying but true to yourself. Exactly. Which is exactly what anonymous needs to exactly. do. Exactly. And I think that's the thing. Like you need to strip down what exactly it is you want, because it might not just be that this guy's a nice guy and you don't like nice guys. It could just be that like, he's not your person. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of pressure you're putting on yourself. And I think you need to be able to see the difference of like what you want. And if the only reason you're not into this guy is because he's not a quote unquote, like bad guy, then yeah. Like Asha, like you need to give him more of a chance and like try to spice it up in the way that you need to, Mm -hmm. but it could just be that you're not into it too. And that's okay too. Like we're not made for everyone, you know? Yeah. And I've said this before on the podcast, um, dating is and can be such a personal thing, but in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a business transaction. Yeah. And if it's a bad fit, it's a bad fit. It's not his fault. It's not your fault. You're simply not a good fit. Yeah. It doesn't mean he's a bad person. It doesn't mean that you're shallow and (laughs) not into the nice guy. It just means that you're simply not a good fit, but you have, you have to give it a fair shot. Totally. And if you are noticing this pattern in your life, then I think that's even more of a reason to push past the initial, like, "Mm, I don't know Mm -hmm. and see like what this guy has to offer. But also what do we always say, Ash? If you pour alcohol on a scar, it shouldn't hurt. So if you are still tying these feelings to like wanting a bad guy and wanting that attention in it is obviously still affecting you mentally and emotionally. Mm -hmm. I think that's just a sign that maybe you need to work through some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I had to work through it in counseling to get over this feeling of always having to be chosen over someone else Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that brought a lot of issues in my life, you know? So I think that if there's some deeper stuff tied to this, I think you use this as your like initial sign that you might need to like dig a little deeper to see if there's some healing that needs to take place. But Also, I think you need to like push past, like Ash said, and give this guy a fair chance. And if in a few dates, kind of like your situation, in a few dates, you're like, I still am not feeling it. Then like, don't waste your time or his. 
Um, but don't take that as a like, oh my gosh, I just like, it's cause he's not a bad guy. It just might be because he's not your guy, yeah. you know? No, a hundred percent. Um, wow. I feel like we handled that really well. Yeah. I feel like we hit it from all angles. Why are we so prepared for this episode? Why are we just professional freaking fire just crushing it today fire. anonymous thank you so much for sharing i loved this topic i you're right i don't think i have or we have talked about this topic um before I mean, that's surprising because we do a lot of dating that's so true <laughs> so i'm surprised that hasn't happened yet so thank you for sharing i'm sure multiple people related to that um guys and girls alike yeah mm -hmm. uh-huh i feel bad for the good guys i don't they'll they'll come out what? fine in the end no but i do feel bad for like like we do have this whole, even society, like it's, it's always the bad, but it's not just a bad guy. It's the bad guys that you see glimpses of like a good heart and you hold on to that. <laughs> yeah. Like but in then, vampire diaries, you know, <sighs> or like, what was the, um, oh my gosh, what was the show? Oh, me and Ash were watching. What's the show called? Um, Bridgerton. Oh, 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 <laughs> that too. Um, us and our murder show. Um, <laughs> And like how I'm like, oh, he's like such a jerk, but like it's because he's hurting. Like yeah. we love, especially twos and people like me. I was gonna we say, love like the when, when Terrence says we, <laughs> that was mostly her. <laughs> true, it's very true. It's very true. We were both like, he's so he's what? What were we saying? We were like, you were like, oh, he's so hot. I was like, I know, like he's just he's like so this good broken. guy. And I just want to fix him. I just want to fix him. And I was like, I was just staring at his abs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, same, but like I want to fix him. <laughs> Anyway, Anyways. um, let's do our second dad joke of the day. Ready? <laughs> yes. What did the ocean say to the sailboat? Are you wanting to go? Uh, I don't know. Nothing. It just waved. No. Uh, <laughs> no. But um, shh. <laughs> so good. It's bad. So good. It's um, not bad, Ash. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Um, again, super pumped. Enneagram epic, epic episode. Wow, you got trouble. Epic so trouble. Apparently, me too. With words, <laughs> um, is coming out next week, and we're yes. very excited about it. So, if you now haven't, we yet, have to do it because we literally yet, said right. We said it multiple times. Next week, yeah. Okay, next yep. week, next week, baby. So, baby. Uh, yeah. Send in your stories. We're going to dive in to all of the enneagram numbers, and it's going to be a good time. Um, so yeah, we'll talk to you guys then. Thanks for writing in. Bye. Love you, bye. So I've been like really into shower products and also I've kind of discovered that there's some products that I love using like men's products. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, Ash? Mm -hmm. We've related on that. The scents. The scents, the quality, everything. And today we are partnering with a company that if you're like us, you will be excited about and that is Duke Cannon. You guys have probably heard already, but Thick is a new product from Duke Cannon Supply Company. Thick earns its name by being three times thicker than all the other common body washes, which we love. Duke Cannon Thick High Viscosity Body Wash is $9 each, or you can get all four for $30. They have the most amazing scents, guys. I'm a big scent person. It affects me dramatically, and um, they have a lot of very like earthy smells, which we love a lot. My absolute favorite, if I was to recommend one, would be the Naval Diplomacy. It has a refreshing ocean scent with notes of fresh water, musk, and bergamot. That's like your dream I love combo. bergamot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Visit DukeCannon.com and use promo code ADVICE for 10% off your entire order. Free shipping with orders over $20. A range of Duke Cannon's men's premium products are also available at select Target stores.